Hello fellow Spare Parts Army, I'm your host Chris Cappy and it's this channel's mission and goal to bring you some insight into how the military operates. In today's episode, we're going to go over the British main battle rifle, the SA-80 family of weapons. So I have a ton of respect for our mates across the pond, the British Armed Forces. For the last four decades, the UK infantry used a bullpup design for their main battle rifle. It's so bad that us Americans decided we wouldn't rip it off and turn it into an Emmy Award winning rifle. I know there's a ton of distrust out there within the weapons community when it comes to bullpup designs compared to conventional firearms. My guess is a lot of this actually comes directly from British soldiers not so great experience on the ground with this rifle. I want to get to the bottom of if the incredible amount of hate for this weapon is justified or not. In order to do that, we'll have to get into British Army doctrine with the bullpup rifle. The main benefit of this design is having a more compact weapon, and that's useful when you're trying to cram a bunch of soldiers in the back of a small armored vehicle. The term bullpup actually comes from the term English Bulldog, which means an ugly, small, aggressive, and powerful dog, just like the rifle. I can only imagine what a Chihuahua rifle or a Poodle pistol would be the equivalent of. The original L85 A1 version of the rifle has a long-standing reputation as an absolute piece of shit. The L85 A3 has a rate of fire of 650 rounds per minute and a muzzle velocity of 940 meters per second. The effective firing range is 400 meters. The British Army makes great use of optics by mounting a four times scope on top of almost every single infantryman's rifle. Here is the interesting part to note though. The barrel length is 20.4 inches for comparison the M4 even though it's longer overall in length only has a barrel length of 14.5 inches. This also has the positive side effect of making the weapon more accurate. Some people look at the bullpup design choice and find it disgusting. They want to take a tactical chunder right there. That's an actual slang term from Britain that I found and I strongly encourage you to look it up and use it in casual conversation. The rifle weighs 11 pounds when fully loaded with an optic. By comparison, the M4 weighs nine pounds in the same configuration. Notice how I'm using pounds to describe a British weapon here just to trigger all my British comrades. We fought a whole war of independence for the right to be wrong about how we measure sh Hey there, mate, you talking smack about my rifle? It's my British soldier friend, Oliver Oscar. No, I was just saying how I think the weapon is better than the US M4 in many ways. Maybe you can tell us how you feel about your L85. Do you like it or no? Well, at first it was complete rubbish. Now they've gone and fixed all those initial problems and now it works bloody great. I'm glad to hear it. You are in no way a offensive, stereotypical portrayal of a British soldier. I have an idea there, mate. Why don't you bugger off, Cappy? Roger that. The doctrine used with the L85 bullpup rifle comes from many hard learned lessons. I'm told the assumption is the mother of all screw ups. And when the British fought in Argentina in the 80s, they made the mistake of assuming they were carrying enough 7.62 on them. They were using their old main battle rifle at the time, the FNFAL rifle. At one point, they resorted to picking up ammo off their enemy and using that. They realized they needed to carry a lot more ammo and that that ammo and weapon had to be lighter to do that. And that's where the idea for the L85 came from. A big difference between the US forces and the British Army is they have the ability to put their rifle on fully automatic. The British Army has been training with using and perfecting the use of the bullpup for decades. It wouldn't be worth retooling their entire game plan after only using the rifle for 40 years. Am I poking fun at the British too much? I hope not, because they really are my favorite ally. I feel like a reverse John Oliver going over there and making fun of stuff I really don't know about. I'm kidding, I love John Oliver. I actually interned for him years ago. Did you know if you forget the milk in his coffee, he'll spill it right on you? <laughs> so the L85 has a development story that's kind of similar to what we've heard about the US Forces M4 rifle. When they first introduced it, everyone hated it for a lot of the same reasons that the M4 was hated. They're both accused of being crafted from flimsy pieces of plastic, and both weapons were originally accused of jamming all the time. But I'll go a step further here to say the L85 was initially received even worse than the M4. 
The original magazine had weak springs, which could only handle 26 rounds instead of the 30 rounds it was meant to hold. Those aluminum magazines deformed if you held it too tightly, because as we all know, everyone grips their magazines gently during combat. The real question is, does the L85 have a British accent when you fire it? Bang, bang, pew, pew, cheerio. Things are very different in Britain. The L85 was originally supposed to fire the British engineered 485 millimeter rifle round. You've probably never heard of the 485, and that's because NATO crushed the 45's dreams of ever flying through the air into an enemy soldier. The idea behind this cartridge was to fire a heavy bullet at a high velocity while being lighter than the 5.56. This rifle round would have had better performance than the 5.56, but for economic, practical, and political reasons, the British had to design and rechamber their L85 in a 5.56 version. This rechamber caused problems though because it resulted in a lower rate of fire. When the British forces first deployed with the rifle, they complained about the design flaws and not the usual amount of British tea time complaining. I'm, I'm talking these troops even nicknamed the L85 the civil servant because it never worked and can't be fired. By the time the second episode of Iraq came out in 2003, they had fixed most of these problems. The L85A2 new and improved version had dozens of changes, including a more durable firing pin and a heavier hammer. This helped to prevent all those misfires. The bolt release catch was strengthened. A recoil spring was, with higher compression was installed to even out the firing rate. All these changes were done to make the weapon more reliable. They made it so that the magazine would stop falling out on its own. And I don't have a lot of deal breakers in my relationships with firearms, but the magazine falling out on its own is definitely one of them. It originally had the magazine release button in a terrible location that was prone to you accidentally hitting it while you were out on patrol. In 2018, the British Army began rolling out the latest and greatest update. They poured 95 million into creating the L85A3. Just like how the US forces have the Future Warrior Program and Russia has Ratnik, the British have a program called FIST, which stands for Future Integrated Soldier Technology. The FIST program focused on improving the infantry's combat effectiveness. Like the other programs, the goal is to improve situational awareness, communications, weapons, and optics. The old aging SUSAT 4x scope will be replaced with the ACOG with an option to add a shield close quarter reflex battle sight. Heckler and Koch will be in charge of making these upgrades from the A2 to the A3 version, and it's expected to increase the service life of the SA-80 past 2025. The A3 variant fixes an issue with an over-rotating selector level, it adds a new upper receiver, and a new paint coat that will be able to minimize the weapon's visibility to infrared sensors. This is an incredibly important factor because in future near-peer wars, as sensor detection becomes more prevalent than ever before, we see the Russians doing the same thing with their camo in their Ratnik program. Is it just me or does Ratnik program sound like some kind of bad Russian hairdo? So as the bayonet becomes less important in American training, it has remained a tradition to the British. Each soldier is issued a bayonet for their rifle. They still train with these knives. And when I was in boot camp, we never even saw a bayonet. The L85 knife attachment features a bottle opener, which you can use to open your craft beer that you begged your family to secretly mail you because you're not allowed to drink on deployment. There are several stories of a British infantry regiment actually using the bayonet on their L85, including once in 2004 at the Battle of Al Amaria in Iraq. Many countries use a bullpup rifle, including China and the Australians. The disadvantages of a bullpup is the slightly awkward reload, especially when you're lying prone, and having the ejection port right next to your face can be worrisome to some. On the other hand, the pros are increased maneuverability, slightly faster reaction times on your ready up drills. The L85 first prototype was created back in 1976, so it's about one decade younger than the M16 family and has quickly gone from initially being hated by British troops to today not really even being hated anymore. At the end of the day, I think the L85 A3 version has finally brought the bullpup out of the mud that it was born in. And that's all I've got on the British main battle rifle. Let me know what you think of the L85. Does it deserve all the hate that it gets? Please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. That helps promote our videos across YouTube. Consider joining our Discord channel. 
I'm your host, Chris Cappy, and now for your moment of hua. Tea time. Hey there, mate, you talking... Hey there. At first... Well...